So if you take a look at my scene, you can see that I have a virtual camera set up. So this is Cinema Machine Virtual Camera. And you can see that the main camera, which is going to be attached to the player, has a Cinema Machine brain attached to it as well. So Cinema Machine allows you to do a lot of things with the camera. If you don't already know, you can find it in Windows Package Manager. And then search the Unity Registry for Cinema Machine. And you can install it into your project. From there to get roughly the same setup, you want to right click and do cinema machine, virtual camera. That's going to give you this setup. And then you want to make sure that you are following or looking at the player object. And inside the virtual camera, you can see that you can set up the noise profile as a 60 shake in order to create that earthquake effect and then increase the amplitude and the frequency in order to make it as strong as you need it to be. But we're actually going to turn off the noise for right now because we want to have this only occur when the player takes damage. So I'm going to add a new script here and then let's call this new component shake on player hit. New script, create an add. Okay, so what we want to do now is that when the player gets hit, we respond to it in this script and then we set the noise profile up to play the camera shake for a set period of time. OK, so before we jump into the code, I want to show how this scene currently looks, where if I go and approach the slime, the slime will chase me and I'll take damage. And you'll notice that the UI actually responds to me taking damage. And that's done through the use of Unity actions or Unity events. So for each character in the game that can be damaged, I have a damageable character component. And I add this to both the slime and the player. So anything I want to take damage, it's going to be able to notify the rest of the game that it did take damage. And I'm doing that through the use of a Unity action. So you can see I have this class character events, the action character damaged. I call invoke on it with the amount of damage and the object that got damaged. So if I go ahead and take a look at character events, you'll see here that I have uh, two functions in here, just one that's currently being used which means there will only be one of these active in the game. And we can reference them directly by getting the class name and then the name of these static variables. So with this Unity action, let me go ahead and show you. I'll right click here on character damaged. And let's do go to references. So you can see here the different classes that have anything to do with this Unity action. So I have the UI manager for my game, which responds whenever that action is invoked. And this is how I'm showing the text above the character during the gameplay. So for getting the camera to react, we can use the same Unity action very similarly. So let's jump into the shake on player hit script. So we're going to want a void awake and then a void, let's say, undestroy. So that when this object enters the scene for the first time and when it is completely removed from the scene, we can subscribe and unsubscribe it from that Unity action, which is basically a C-sharp event. So to get it to subscribe, we need to reference that character events class, right? So character events dot character damaged plus equals, and then we'll give it a new method to call whenever character damaged is invoked. And down here for on destroy character events dot character damaged minus equals so that we remove it from the list of methods to be invoked. And then we need to create a method which takes these as parameters. And then let's do public void shake if player, which is going to take the float, the damage and the game object. Now that this matches the parameters, we can add this to the on awake and on destroy. So whenever a character gets damaged now, it's going to call this shake if player function. So if we wanted to shake the camera, we could check to see if the character that was hit was a player. So we could do if character hit, let's say dot tag is equal to player. So if you set it up like this, then if the game object entering here has the tag player set, and that would be up here in the top right for the game object, each game object can have a tag. You can see that. Then we can set the noise on the virtual camera. But I have a better idea, actually, because sometimes your camera might not want to target the player specifically. So instead, 
let's rename this to be shake if camera target. Okay, so we're gonna remove that bit about the tag. And what we're actually gonna to wanna to do is get this cinema machine virtual camera reference and check the follow or look at target. So cinema machine virtual camera. And we're gonna to have to use this cinema machine namespace up here at the top. So let's get reference to the component on the game object. Vcam equals get component cinema machine virtual camera. And now we can check if the target on the virtual camera is the same as this game object that just got hit. So if vcam.follow equals character hit, then we can debug.log and say vcam target hit, shake the camera. And uh, let's go ahead and clear up this start and update method. We probably don't need that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. You'll notice that I have another script, camera attached to spawned player. So when my player spawned, it automatically sets it up here in the follow camera. But if you just have your player in your scene, you don't need that. You can just set the follow target outside in the editor view. So let's see if this shake on player hit actually gets triggered when our player gets hit. Okay, it did not. So simple fix here in the virtual camera follow target, you're actually looking for the transform, not the game object. So instead of character hit, we'll do character hit dot transform, and that should go ahead and fix it. So let's change that. Let's go back out here, hit play, and get hit. And we see virtual camera target hit, shake the camera. So for the virtual camera, let's turn on the noise profile again. So change it from none to basic multi-channel Perlin. And then let's set the noise profile to shake, but the amplitude gain and frequency gain will set to zero for now. So now in the script, we're going to need to call get cinema machine component, cinema machine basic multi channel Perlin. So quite long there. I'll create a variable called noise Perlin and let's give it the type. So just copy that type up there and give it the name noise Perlin. So the get cinema machine component actually needs to be called on the virtual camera itself. So if you came dot get cinema machine component, cinema machine, basic multi-channel Perlin. Okay, great. So we have that and we just need to set the settings up on it. So noise Perlin dot, uh, let's see, amplitude. And we can set this to some value for now. And let's also set the frequency gain. So noise Perlin frequency and let's set that to one as well okay so now when we get hit these values should be set to one and we should get a camera shake so let's go ahead and hit play let's get hit and yeah i can see the camera shaking the amplitude gain is set to one the frequency is set to one maybe we want that to be a little bit stronger though so let's actually make that a public variable we can put for the shake on hit script so public float hit amplitude gain and hit frequency gain and we'll default these to actually let's just default them to two because one is kind of hard to notice it's too subtle and then let's take these variables down here and the next thing we're going to want to do is uh, set up a timer so that this is only going to persist for a short period of time so let's actually create a little method here public void start shake and Let's take this bit of code down into here, and then we'll make a variable is shaking is true. So that'll be a private Boolean up here is shaking is false. And then we just need a time elapsed variable. So float shake time elapsed equals zero. And then we need a duration for the shake. So we'll make that public so that we can change it in the editor. So shake time is going to be one second long. So when shake if camera target is triggered, we want to start the shake. Then we'll need to create a update methods. So void update and we'll do shake time elapsed plus equals time dot delta time. So we're just setting up a simple timer here. And if the shake time elapsed is longer than the shake time, then we're going to stop the shake. So is shaking equals false. And we'll take these values and set them to zero. Okay, so let's call stop shake once the time is elapsed. And uh, one last thing I want to add in here for start shake, 
we might run into the situation where the player got hit, the camera's shaking, but we want the player to get hit again and continue shaking the camera for an extended period of time. So we will take the shake time elapsed and set that to zero whenever start shake is called. So if this happens while the camera's shaking, it's going to reset the timer. And also when stop shake is called, we also want to reset the time elapsed to zero. And also we want to do the same thing when stop shaking is called. So that should probably be all the scripting we need. So we can see our hit amplitude gain, our frequency gain, and our shake time. It's going to be set in the noise profile up here. Let's go ahead and hit play and see how it works. So we'll get hit. Camera shakes for about one second, and there it stops. So we get hit again. Camera shakes. So let's bump up the amplitude now to five. Hit play, and we get hit. Okay, now that is a rather strong earthquake effect. So we can just kind of keep playing around with the numbers and see if we get something that we like. Maybe we want it to be extra strong, but a very short duration. So let's set the amplitude gain to 10 and the duration to 0 0.25. Last little bit in the exit method, we do only want the time elapsed for the shake to be uh, adding if is shaking is actually set to true. So just wrap all of that in a is shaking equals true check and that should be good. So to wrap up this tutorial, I added in a sound effect that plays when the character gets hit. I also added this into the damageable script. So you can see really simply just doing a audio source dot play with the already attached sound effects. So when we combine the two, we get something like this, where when we get hit, we have the camera shake and the sound effect playing in conjunction with each other. So overall, when we combine multiple effects like this into one, we're going to get a little bit better feedback when our player takes damage. So that's pretty much the gist of how you would set up a camera shake inside of a Unity game and have that trigger on a certain event, such as when a player takes damage. So if you want to download the code for this video, I'll have a link to my Patreon down below. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future Unity content.